This is the fifth part of a personal A to Z of liners and cruise ships from the 1920s to the present day. It's in five parts. The ships are shown at sea, approaching or leaving harbours, docked and anchored. Some are short clips because that's all I have, and some go on for a minute or more. Some of the film has been included before in my DVDs and videos, but a lot has not been previously released, particularly a lot of the black and white post-war material and the most recent up-to-date material taken on video whilst cruising. Quality varies from rather grainy, particularly the older film, to very sharp images taken more recently, as you see here. Each part is about 50 minutes or longer. I've tried to split them according to alphabetical order. The title for each ship shows its name at the time the film was taken, the tonnage and the original launch date and when the ship went out of service. In this part we cover ships with names from R to Z. The 1928 Rangitiki was built by Brown on Clydebank, the New Zealand shipping company, and scrapped in 1962. Built by Fincantieri Navale for Princess Cruises, the Regal Princess was 69,845 tons. She was launched in 1991. We see her here in St. Lucia. met up with her again in St. Petersburg on a Baltic cruise. The Regina was originally called Panama and then taken over by the US Army in 1941 as James Parker. She became Panama again after the war and was sold to President Lyons in 1957 as President Hoover. In 1964 she became the Chandra's Regina. Finally, Regina Prima in 1973. She was scrapped in 1980. We see the Reina del Mar in the colors of the Pacific Steam Navigation Company, transiting a lock in the Panama Canal. She was built by Holland and Wolf and launched in 1955. She was rebuilt and came under Union Castle Management in 1964 and was sold to them in 1973. She was used by Union Castle for cruising and we can now see her in the Union Castle colours. She was scrapped in 1975. We have a very distant shot of the 1914 Reliance seen here at the entrance to the Kiel Canal. She caught fire and sank in 1938. We were tied up in Mahi in the Seychelles, Royal Star, when we saw Renaissance 8 burst ahead of us. This, of course, was before the collapse of the Renaissance Company. We got a better view of her as we set off by boat for one of our excursions.
Later that evening, we lined the decks to watch her sailing. On another cruise, this time on Sea Dream 2, we stopped in Gibraltar to take on water. We could see the Rotterdam of 37,783 tons lying in port. She was originally launched in 1958 for the Holland America Line on a regular service and then registered in 1973 to NV Rotterdam for cruising. It would appear that she had been in Gibraltar for some time, awaiting a decision as to her further employment. The Royal Odyssey was built by Chantiers d'Atlantique as Shalom in 1962. She has since been called Doric and Hanseatic. We can see her here at the Tilbury landing stage preparing to sail. Royal Princess was launched in 1984. She was built by O.Y. Wadsilla for P&O, later transferred to Princess Cruises. She's seen here in the Caribbean. Slightly larger than the Renaissance 8, which we saw earlier, Royal Star was 5,360 tons. She was built in 1956 as Ocean Islander and has since had the names San Giorgio and City of Andros. She is now owned by African Star Cruises. As such, she spends her time cruising around the East African Islands out of Mombasa.
built by Brown of Clydebank for the New Zealand Shipping Company and launched in 1950, Roaheny sailed between the UK and New Zealand. In 1966 she adopted the colours of the Federal Steamship Company and in 1968 she was sold to CY Tongue and renamed Oriental Rear. The 1937 Rice was used as a troop ship during the war. She was built by De Scheldt for Koninklijk and scrapped in 1968. We watch as the 1967 Sapphire back slowly into her berth in Malaga. This ship has had several names. Princessa Oceanic, Sea Prince 5, Sea Prince, Ocean Princess, Princess Italia and Italia. She was built by Cantieri Navali and launched in 1967. She was 12,263 tons. The Safina e Husai was originally the 1935 Potsdam. After the war she served as a troop ship with Pierno as Empire Fowey. She was 17,500 tons and was scrapped in 1976. Built by Forges and Chantier for the Norsk America Line, the 1964 Saga Fjord served on the Atlantic routes. In 1983 she was transferred to Norwegian American Cruises and then later sold to Cunard in 1983 and continued to use her original name. In 1997 she was renamed Gripsholm. She now has the name of Saga Rose for Saga Cruises seen here at the Tilbury landing stage and later in the Caribbean. We now see her as Saga Rose in Southampton. This very popular ship will sail later in the day on yet another cruise. We get a very good view of her now as we sail into Southampton in Braemar. The 1952 Santa Maria, seen here in Lisbon, had the unfortunate experience of being seized by rebels in 1961 during a voyage from Curaçao to Miami. The passengers were later released in Recife and the ship retaken. The 10,000 ton Seaborne Pride 
was launched in 1988 for seaborne cruises. These ships, I am told, are the height of luxury. Now here's a change. The 1931 Sea Cloud was built by Krupp Theft as a private yacht, the Hussar. She was a weather observation ship during the war and was restored in 1979 and now operates the Sea Cloud Cruises. She's seen here tied up in Barbados. Launched in 2001, the Sea Cloud 2 was built in Spain for Sea Cloud cruises. She's seen here entering Valletta Harbour. She sailed again later that evening, headed for North Africa. This ship, Sea Dream 2, was built by Wotsila, Finland, the Sea Dream Yacht Club, and launched in 2002. She's 4,260 tons. We see her initially in Madeira Harbour. We can now watch her as she enters Sivi de Vecchia. This ship along with her twin sister Sea Dream 1 are ideal for cruising in the Mediterranean. And should you enjoy water sports they have all the facilities. Otherwise, you can just sit back and enjoy the cruise. Sea Princess is another ship with a long history. She was built as Kongsholm and launched in 1965 for Swedish America Line by John Brown on Clydebank. In 1978 she was sold to P&O and transferred to Princess Cruises. She was later transferred back to P&O and sailed as Sea Princess and then in 1999 was renamed Victoria. She had originally been built with two funnels, but p removed the forward one. She was sold again in 2002 to Holiday Krusfaren and renamed Mona Lisa. She's seen here as Victoria passing Canberra on Canberra's last voyage. Sea Princess 2 was built by Fincantieri for Princess Cruises. She was briefly called Adonis for p and featured as one of the two white sisters with Oceana.
Shortly afterwards, she was returned to the Princess Cruises and reverted to her original name. She's seen here entering harbour. Built by Mayor West for the Royal Caribbean Line, Serenade of the Seas was launched in 2003. She was 90,000 tonnes. We see her hair going astern towards her berth in Barbados. Launched in 1994, the Silver Cloud was 16,927 tonnes. She was built by Vincentini Mariotti for Silver Seeds Cruises. catch up with the Seven Seas Navigator on a Mediterranean cruise. 
She was built by Mariotti for Seven Seas Cruises, now Regents, and launched in 1999. She's 28,550 tons. A very brief glimpse of Shaw, Savile and Albion's Southern Cross launched in 1954. She was 19,313 tonnes. We see the French built Sovereign of the Seas in Nassau. She's over 73,000 tonnes and is operated by the Royal Caribbean Line. The Spirit of Adventure was built by Halswerk Deutsche Weft as Berlin and she was featured in the German TV show Traumschiff, means dream ship. She's now owned by Saga Cruises. We see her here in the port of Caleo in Peru, about to leave. Launched in 1972, the Spirit of London was built specifically by Pierno for cruising. She was the first liner built by them since the Canberra. She was later transferred to Princess Cruises and became the Sun Princess. Splendour of the Seas was launched in 1996 for the Royal Caribbean Line. She is over 69,000 tonnes. Launched in 1956, the Staten Dam was built for the Holland America Line, initially on the Atlantic routes. In 1982, she was sold to Artis Investment Company and renamed Rhapsody. She's 24,200 tons. And is seen here entering Southampton. Another ship built for Holland America Line, originally as Mazdam, was the Stefan Battery. She was launched in 1949 and sold in 1968 to the Polish Ocean Line when she became Stefan Battery. She's seen here at the Tilbury landing stage.
Della Polaris was built in Gothenburg for Bergen Line of Norway in 1926. She was seized by the Germans in 1940 and returned in 1945. She was sold to the Swedish Clipper Line in 1951 and finally sold to the Japanese and became a floating hotel for Scandinavia. Two short clips of the Stirling Castle built for the Union Castle in 1935. She was used as a troop ship from 1940 to 1946 and scrapped in 1966. Although I've been collecting films since the mid 1950s, these are the first pictures I have of Strathaird and I only received them this year. She was built by Vickers Armstrong in Barrow and launched in 1931 for the P&O and was one of the original White Sisters along with Strathnava. The pictures you see here are of her before the war with three funnels in Colombo. She served as a troop ship from 1939 to 1946 and returned to the Australia run for p shortly thereafter. As we move to colour after the war, we see they've got to travel with the flags on the top of the mast. Finally, we get a clip of her at anchor in Aden. There's another piano ship possibly the Carthage or the Canton, in the background. In April 1952 I arrived at Tilbury and woke in the morning to see the Ormond and the Strathedon berthed to one side and ahead of us. In my mind these are the most beautiful liners ever built but then I'm biased. Strathedon is seen here in Aden as she's passed by the Orontes on her last voyage. She was built by Vickers Armstrong in Barrow and launched in 1937. She served as a troop ship from 1939 to 1946 and returned to service in 1947. She was scrapped in 1969. Strathmore was built alongside the Orion in the Vickers Armstrong Yard at Barrow. She was launched in 1935. She served as a troop ship from 1939 to 1948 and then was scrapped in 1969. We see her here entering Aden. These pictures show her bathed in the evening sunshine in some port in the Mediterranean.
finally we see her passing at sea. Strathnava was the sister to Strath Air. She was built by Vickers Armstrong and launched in 1931. As with all the other Straths, she served as a troop ship from 1939 to 48 and then returned to service. And she was scrapped in 1962. We see her here leaving Port Melbourne. Some rather grainy shots of her passing under the harbour bridge and then docking in Piermont. These shots were taken from the foremast whilst the ship was at sea. We pick her up in Tilbury in 1962, destoring prior to sailing for the scrapyard. And sadly, we see her in the scrapyard work having started already. Sun Dream was built by Wartzilla for Royal Caribbean Cruise Line as the Song of Norway and lengthened in 1978. She was originally launched in 1970 at 22,900 tons. She's seen here in Madeira as Thompson Cruises Sun Dream. We get a closer view of her as we pass her on our way out of the harbour. Sunward 2 was built in Holland for Cunard as Cunard Adventurer and launched in 1971. She was sold to Klosters in 1977 and renamed Sunward 2 and then sold again in 1991 and became Triton, which we shall see later. Very quick shot of the Union Castle Transvaal Castle launched in 1961. She was later renamed Val and sold to Carnival Cruises in 1977 and renamed Festival. 
The Thompson Spirit was built by Chantier d'Atlantique for Holland America Line as the new Amsterdam and launched in 1983. She was sold to the United States Line in 2000 and named Patriot and then repurchased by Holland America and chartered to Louis Cruise Line and then they chartered her to Thompson Cruises. She's seen here leaving Malta. We just saw this ship as Sunward II, now called the Triton. She was launched in 1971 as Cunard Adventurer. She's now changed her name yet again to Coral Royal, and then once more to Coral, and we saw her in that role in part two. We see her here as we entered Copenhagen. Later the same day we watched her sail. Launched in 1952, the Uganda was built for the British India Line and was used on the Africa run. She was then converted to a school ship in 1968. In 1978, she transferred to P&O ownership. She served as a hospital ship in 1982 in the Falklands War and later as a troop ship and returned to school cruising for a very short period. She was laid up for quite a long time and then sailed to the breakers in 1985 but was driven ashore in 1986 and subsequently broke up. Built by Newport News USA for the United States line and launched in 1951, the United States captured the Blue Ribbon in 1952. She was laid up in 1969 and has been laid up ever since. We have two clips of her here at sea. We see the Val in Southampton. She was built by John Brown and Company of Clyde Bank as Transvaal Castle for the Union Castle Line and sold to the South African Marine Corps and renamed Val in 1961. She was subsequently sold to Carnival Cruises as Festival in 1977.
we can watch her now as she sails from Southampton down Southampton Water. The Volkerfreude shaft was built in Gothenburg for the Swedish America Line as Stockholm. She was later sold to the Free German Trade Unions Confederation and registered in Rostock. She's seen here in Tilbury Riverside at the landing stage. Launched in 1972 for Norwegian America Line, the Vistfjord was sold to Cunard. She's seen here in 1994 at the D-Day celebrations. Cunard later renamed her Coronia and then sold her to Saga, where she now sails as Saga Rose. A quick look at the 1926 Volcania in Naples. She was scrapped in 1974. Again, a very quick look, this time at William Royce, launched in 1946. She was later sold to the Achille Loro group and became the Achille Loro and was burnt out in 1994. Built in France, the Windstar was launched in 1986 for Windstar Cruises. We see her here in the Panama Canal. Built by Camel Laird and Company for Union Castle and launched in 1959, Windsor Castle was later sold in 1977 to Lartis and renamed Margarita L. From 1979, she was permanently moored at Jeddah as a luxury accommodation ship. She was towed to Greece in 1990.
seen here in the Pool of London, World Discoverer was wrecked in 2001. She was 3,153 tons. We see the 1919 Yorkshire of the Bibby Line in Colombo Harbour. She was 10,100 tonnes and she was sunk by U-37 in 1939. Built by Fincanti Airy for Holland America Line and launched in 2000, the 60,000 tons and dam is seen here in Aruba. We'll see some more of her as we pass on our way out of the harbour. One hundred years earlier, in 1900, the Zealand, built by Brown on Clydebank for Red Star Line, briefly worked for the White Star Line in 1910, and in 1915 was renamed Northam as a trooper. She returned to Red Star in 1920 as Zealand, and in 1927 she was sold to Atlantic Transport and renamed Minnesota. She was scrapped in 1930. And so we come to the end of part five and the end of the series. Although it's been a lot of work, I've enjoyed making it and I hope you too have enjoyed this series.